Hi folks, uh, Captain Sam, Pork Chop Express Charters, uh, making a report. First one for for this season, 2024. It's uh, March 26th. Um, wind is a uh, howling today, so we're off, and uh, seemed like a good time to to bring a report for how we've been doing so far this year, how we've been fishing, um, what we've been doing to catch the fish. So we'll just go over some of those things. Um, fishing this year has been really good. I think we've only had two trips where we did catch all the fish but over the period of their trip we caught them more than their fish uh they were here for several days which is the best way to book a trip uh in the spring you, you coming for one day that's a challenge you might not even get the fish um so anytime you're planning a sp spring fishing trip i totally suggest at minimum of three days uh four days is even better uh, increases your chances of getting to have at least one or two days of really good fishing. Some people get lucky and they get them all. Uh, but uh, this year we had a lot of wind. Temperatures have been up and down. We've had 70s in February, I believe. And, you know, all the way down to just last week, it was 19 degrees. So we've had it all. Um, actually had a trip, but we went out and couldn't even fish. I mean, my boat just turned into an ice cube. So... You know, that, that can happen when it's freezing temperatures, uh, too much spray, and it just freezes on everything. So, you know, it's uh, it's tough to play that game, trying to get people on the water. Uh, but when we've gotten out, uh, the fishing has been fantastic. Um, we fished anywhere from, uh, from uh, Marblehead, uh, uh, in between the islands, all the way to Lorraine um, on the west side of the dumping grounds we have not been east of that um we fished in water anywhere from uh 50 foot deep uh to uh, 27 28 feet deep so it, it has varied uh depends on the water conditions um when the water's been clean the fish have been all over so the key has been to uh you know search with your graph till you find suspended fish that's the key if the fish are all piled on the bottom you're gonna to struggle to catch those fish. I'm not saying you can't, um, you can, but your success is going to be probably limited if the fish are piled on the bottom. You wanna find fish that are up, suspended off the bottom, those are gonna be your feeding fish. That's what we look for when we're, when we're running our sonar, uh, we're motoring. We wanna find a, a fairly good school of fish, not just one or two, you know, we're looking for a lot of fish on the graph and up off the bottom. That's what we're searching for when we're looking for a spot to fish. Uh, when the water's muddy, you know the key seems to be, uh, you know, they're, they're, you're gonna you're gonna mark fish piled in the muddy water. That water's warmer. That sand is heating up. The the, the dirt makes that portion of the water typically warmer. So um, the fish will pile into that mud. Uh, we've all fished it. We've been tempted to fish it. Once in a while, it's just clean enough that you can actually catch fish in it. You know, we've caught fish in one or two feet of visibility before. Um, it is possible. Um, you're better to search for that mix, that, that transition water between clean and mud. If you can find the transition water that has the suspended fish, you're going to do well. That's what we're looking for when there's muddy water conditions. So we will motor around, we'll graph. Um, the key is to find that transition water. You know, use the tools that we have. If we have satellite pictures, that's great. If you don't, um, we just have to go out on the water and try to find that transition water. That's what we're looking for. Not all transition water holds fish. Um, you know, we, we key in on temperature. You know, the warmer water typically is gonna have the fish right now. So uh, try to find the warmer transition water and that's where those fish are gonna be. Um, our speeds this year, we've been as slow as 0.9. Um, it seemed like we were barely moving. And we've been as fast as almost two miles an hour. So it varies. You know, I, I rec totally recommend the S, the S curves. Speed up, slow down, one side, see what the fish want. If, uh, you know, if you can catch them at two miles an hour, then that's what you want to do. You're going to cover more water. You're going to have more success. The faster speed you can catch fish at, the better. 
So we always play with that. If we're catching at 1.5, I always bump my speed. If I can speed up and catch them at 1.9, then I go 1.9. I'm gonna cover more water, I'm gonna put the, the baits in front of more fish. So I always fish the fastest speed I can and catch fish. Just allows you to cover more water. Um, that's the goal, putting, that, putting those baits in front of as many fish as you can to, to catch those fish that are hungry and that are gonna eat. Um, the colors have varied, you know, some uh, mainly white base, white based baits have been great, but you know, on bright sunny days, chrome baits have performed very well. Um, and on the cloudy days, we go with, you know, the natural colors, the golds uh, have performed pretty well. So, you know, matching those colors to the conditions, but white based overall have caught fish every single day. Um, there have been days though that chrome have uh, outperformed the white baits, but I still have them out. Um, so the white baits uh, are always out there and uh, you know, the, the rest varies based on the conditions. Is it bright? Is it dark? Is it muddy? You know, there's, there's some different variables that come into play uh, based on the conditions. Um, the baits that we have been running um, so far this year, of course, we've been running the bandits. Um, this color has been great. This is a, this is a Barbie. Um, this is Wonder Woman. Um, been a really great bait for us in, in Bandit. Uh, the Bandits I have been running assisted and unassisted. So assisted purely means that we're running a weight to get them down with a shorter lead. Um, and sometimes it's because the fish are deeper, uh, period. And other times it's because it's given the bait a different action. You know, these weights, I'm going to make a training video on how to use the Offshore Tackle Company guppy weights and to get these baits to perform differently in different situations. Um, sometimes it's purely that you put the weight on at 20 feet and it gives that bait a different action than if the weight's on at 50 feet. So sometimes that makes a difference in the fish biting or not. Um, but primarily we've been running 50 foot leads and using the weight right now just to get the bait deeper. If we're marking fish at 35 feet, you know, we've got to get that bait down there and without a weight, you're not going to. So um, that's where we use those. And we also use the weight on, uh, we've been running Smithwick P10s. Uh, they have performed outstanding this spring. Um, they always do in the spring and in the fall because they are a slower action. Water's very cold. The fish are not as aggressive um, there are days that they will attack no matter what, but overall in colder water, the fish are a little more lethargic. They're not going to chase a bait typically like they would in the summer when the water warms up. So we're going to run, uh, you know, slower action baits. The Smithwick P10 is a slow action. Um, we've been doing very well on, uh, deep down Husky Jerk 12s. Um, this is painted by, uh, Killing Time, Ben Garrison. This is his drunken bullfrog, been a great one. Um, this bait is a uh, color, I believe it's called a white perch. Been outstanding for us, been a great bait. I am not weighting these, you certainly can weight these, um, but I've been running these when the fish are a little higher in the water and uh, the husky jerks have been doing really, really well for us. Um, I've also uh, been running some old old baits. I have, past couple years I've been using these and man they just work they work really well they're almost the same profile as a husky jerk they're just slightly smaller but these really really work for me in the spring and um, this bait is a Smithwick suspended rogue um, these work great I have uh, a collection of them this is uh, chrome black back this is uh, what they call clown it's got a gold back and a red head um, they don't have a ton of color variations but they do work. Um, it's an excellent bait and uh, certainly one I use in the spring. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is um, setting the depth of your baits in correlation to where you're marking the fish. So <clears throat> you always want to set your baits at and above where the fish are. So if you're, let's say we're fishing in 50 feet of water and we're marking all the fish in 30, maybe in the range of 30 to 20 feet. Um, in a situation like that, I'm going to set my baits uh, based on the precision trolling app, you know, knowing where those baits are going to be. I'm going to set them from 30 feet up to 
maybe 15 feet. I'll probably even run one or two baits up at 10 or 12 feet just to check for those high fish. Um, and then we just dial it in from there. So we'll, we'll set them up, set one at 30, we'll set one at 28, we'll set one at 26, we'll set one at, you know, and just spread them out. And then we figure out where those fish are going to be biting. Um, sometimes they bite all of them, so you're good to go. Other times you gotta dial it in a little closer and they're only biting in a eight to 10 foot range of depth. So uh, just make sure you're at or above where the fish are being marked. Um, that's the key. You've got to combine your presentation with what you're seeing in your graph. It's very important to do that. Um, a lot of times those high fish too, you will not mark those fish. So let's say the fish is only down 10 feet. Your sonar cone is going to be very narrow at 10 feet. Um, it's just not spreading out that far from the boat. And when that boat goes over top of those fish, those fish will scoot out. Um, they'll, they'll push away from the boat and you'll never mark those fish at 10 feet. So always running a high bait is a pretty good idea because you, the, the fish could be there, but you could possibly not be marking those fish and you'll never know they're there if you don't run some baits there to try to catch them. There have been many days that all the fish we caught were on 50, 60 foot leads and you hardly ever mark those fish. Um, it, it's amazing, but they somehow the boat pushes them away and they just move out from the sonar and they're never getting in your sonar cone. So they're there, but you don't see them on your graph. Um, deeper, we typically, we're, we're, we're catching them on the sonar. We're gonna see them, we're gonna know they're there. But those high, high fish, we always throw some, some, some baits out there to check for those fish. If they're up there, they're usually very active, very aggressive, and they're very good feeding fish, uh, great to go after and catch if they're there. So uh, running a high bait's a good idea. Um, we've been catching some male fish, kind of just let you know where the fishing's at. Um, some of those male fish are milking, so uh, pretty certain, you know, they're catching a lot of fish in the Maumee River now. So the fish are definitely uh, in the beginning stages of the spawn. Uh, we're just gonna see that continue. Um, it's gonna get uh, heavier. The jig bite's gonna start getting really good on the reefs and on structure. Um, we're gonna start to catch, you know, over the next few weeks here, we're gonna start catching uh, post-spawn fish mixed in with pre-spawn fish. And those post-spawn fish are gonna start getting pretty aggressive. Um, you know, once they lay those eggs and they move off the rocks and they're coming back out, you know, they usually put the feed on pretty hard. So, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna see that start to mix in a little bit. Um, you know, we're gonna be keying our fishing in uh, a little tighter now, probably getting a little closer to, to where the spawn actually is going to transpire. Uh, hopefully the wind will give us a chance to key in on some of that shallower water. That's where we wanna be fishing right now. Um, so, you know, things are looking good. Uh, the weather actually looks like it's gonna give us somewhat of a break here over the next week. So hopefully we can get out there and really get after these fish. Uh, hope the report helps you. Um, we're, we're gonna try to do this every week. Uh, also gonna bring some more training uh, videos. Uh, in fact, the next one's gonna be uh, a lot more information about using the offshore tackle company guppy weights, um, how we use those for different situations and uh, to, to do some different things with our baits, not just depth. Uh, but action as well. So be looking forward to uh, making that video for you. I uh, hope you guys all can get out after these big spring walleyes and uh, tight lines to everyone. Thanks.